and good morning everyone welcome to morning prayer brought to you by church of the atonement here in the edgewater neighborhood of chicago um, i'm going to give you some page numbers if you're using morning prayer morning prayer right to begins on page 80 benite on page 82 our two psalms this morning psalms 139 and 140 let me see oh jeez my curse of having oh oh my goodness i am having some trouble some technical problems here <laughs> Okay, now we're right. All right, I apologize for the delay. I had some um, technical problems with my computer. Uh, let me see, back to the page numbers. Our Psalms this morning, Psalms 139 and 140, on pages 794 to 797 of the prayer book. Uh, our two canticles, uh, Canticle 11, page 87, and Canticle 16 on page 92. The Apostles' Creed begins on page 96 and is followed by the Lord's Prayer, traditional language, and Suffrages A on page 97. Um, the General Thanksgiving, uh, as always, we close with the General Thanksgiving, and that is on page 101 of the prayer book. All right, uh, my candle is lit, and uh, this is a reminder that God is with us as we pray together. We may be few in number, but God is always with us as we pray. Let's take a moment. Let's take a breath. Find a place of quiet where we can enter and be still. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And together the Venite. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. And together, Psalms 139 and 140, beginning on page 794. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before. 
and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, excuse me for a minute. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God. You that thirst for blood, depart from me. They speak despitefully against you. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those, O Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent who devise evil in their hearts and stir up strife all day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent and as poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who are determined to trip me up. The proud have, a hidden, have hidden a snare for me and stretched out a net of cords. They have set traps for me along the path. I have said to the Lord, you are my God. Listen, O Lord, to my supplication. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wicked, O Lord, nor let their evil plans prosper. Let not those who surround me lift up their heads. Let the evil of their lips overwhelm them. Let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the mire, never to rise up again. A slanderer shall not be established on the earth. 
and evil shall hunt down the lawless. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the poor and render justice to the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name and the upright shall continue in your sight. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Better is a dry morsel with quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. A slave who deals wisely will rule over a child who acts shamefully and will share the inheritance as one of the family. The crucible, the crucible is for silver and the furnace is for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. An evildoer listens to wicked lips and a liar gives heed to a mischievous tongue. Those who mock the poor insult their maker. Those who are glad at calamity will not go unpunished. Grandchildren are the crown of the aged and the glory of children is their parents. Fine speech is not becoming to a fool, still less is false speech to a ruler. A bribe is like a magic stone in the eyes of those who give it. Wherever they turn, they prosper. One who forgives an affront fosters friendship, but one who dwells on disputes will alienate a friend. A rebuke strikes deeper into a discerning person than a hundred blows into a fool. Evil people seek only rebellion, but a cruel messenger will be sent against them. Better to meet a she-bear robbed of its cubs than to confront a fool immersed in folly. Evil will not depart from the house of one who returns evil for good. The beginning of strife is like letting out water. So stop before the quarrel breaks out. One who justifies the wicked and one who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Why should fools have a price in hand to buy wisdom when they have no mind to learn? A friend loves at all times, and kinsfolk are born to share adversity. It is senseless to give a pledge, to become shorty for a neighbour. One who loves transgression loves strife. One who builds a high threshold invites broken bones. The crooked of mind do not prosper and the perverse of tongue fall into calamity. Here ends the reading. And together, Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, by night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. 
the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. The saying is sure, whoever aspires to the office of bishop desires a noble task. Now a bishop must be above reproach, married only once, temperate, sensible, respectable, hospitable, an apt teacher, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, and not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, keeping his children submissive and respectful in every way. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may be puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace and the snare of the devil. Deacons likewise must be serious, not double-tongued, not indulging in much wine, not greedy for money. They must hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. And let them first be tested. Then, if they prove themselves blameless, let them serve as deacons. Women likewise must be serious, not slanderers, but temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be married only once and let them manage their children and their households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and great boldness in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these instructions to you so that if I am delayed, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. Without any doubt, the mystery of our religion is great. He was revealed in flesh, vindicated in spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed throughout the world, taken up in glory. Here ends the reading. And together, Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And together, the Apostles' Creed on page 96, 
followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that the course of this world may be peaceably governed by your providence, and that your church may joyfully serve you in confidence and serenity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, Direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honour of your name. Amen. And now we come to the prayers for the week beginning May 26 for the Church of the Atonement and for the Church Beyond. And I also invite your own prayers silently or aloud, or you can write them in the chat area of our Google meeting. We pray for the sick, for those in any need or trouble, and for all those who have asked us for our prayers this morning. Brother David Luke, BSG, who had surgery yesterday. Rob L, Carol R, Cheryl, Jolene, Beth, Sean, Jonathan, Devon, Killian, Dennis, Mark, former President Carter, King Charles, Princess Kate, Arun, all with COVID-19, 
Kelly, uh, uh, Ryan B, Shelby, Kathy S, Jason, Harry, Tyler, all who mourn. For Eleanor Francis, a religious, Ken, a deacon, David, Christine, Paul, Thomas and Greg, priests. We pray for an end to war and violence, remembering especially the people of Ukraine, Russia, Iran, the Red Sea, Myanmar and Yemen. We pray for justice and for an end to violence and division in our neighborhood, city and nation. We pray for all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica Kay, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Kari, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. We pray for all families and children in the city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. We pray for members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott serving as security in Iraq. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry, for our sister parishes of St. Benedict's and St. Matthew's in Chiapas, Mexico. We pray in thanksgiving for all who celebrate birthdays this week, Helen Thompson, Michael Van Overen, Amanda Kim, Beatrice Reed, and Richard P. Keffer. We give thanks for the wedding anniversaries of Michael Fogarty and Ann Potter, Dave and Debbie Barford, David Hughes and Stacey Horn. We give thanks for the diaconal ordin ordinations of Mother Joy Rogers and Mother Ann Ryder. And we also give thanks for the anniversary of the priestly ordination of Father John David Van Doren. And we pray for the repose of the souls of the departed. Tim Ashleman, five-year-old Rain Ware, for those killed in the landslide in Papua New Guinea, Sheldon Woods, Bob Smalley, the grandfather of Tim Coe, Mary Robertson, Caleb Carr, the author, and the missionaries killed in Haiti. And at the anniversaries of their deaths, we remember and pray for Jesse McDonald, Florin Pasco, Larry Ravenna, Bernice Funk, the Reverend Abe Ediger, Lorna Jean Biajoli. And now a prayer to Mary, Queen of Peace, from Pope John Paul II in 2001. We ask you, Queen of Peace, to help us respond with the power of truth and love to the new and unsettling challenges of the present moment. Help us also to pass through this difficult period that disturbs the serenity of so many people and to work without delay to build every day and everywhere a genuine culture of peace. Amen. And together, the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing 
through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this concludes morning prayer. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope that you can join us tomorrow and every day. And as I look out my window, I can see that it is a beautiful spring day here in Chicago. Um, I see sun, I see blue skies, I hear birds, so what could be better? May each of us have an absolutely wonderful day, wherever we are, whatever it is that we will be doing. And may we encounter, as always, God's peace, God's joy, and God's great love. Everyone take very good care, be safe, and be well.